The original pond here we did 2011. Okay. Uh, a contractor left them high and dry, and then we came back and fixed it and repaired it. So we put this one in three years later, we put that one in, so. It's addictive, isn't it, this it hobby? Is. So I heard this all started with you saying no pond. Yes, sir, no pond. <laughs> Are you glad you were wrong? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, this, I love this. So you never knew it would be this addictive of a hobby when you started, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. Start with that one silly little... Preformed, preformed tub. Preformed, yeah, that's it. And look at what it has become. It yeah. is just spectacular. Look at how cute this house is. I'm traveling around with Gem Ponds. We are in Downers Grove, Illinois. I'm Greg Whitstock, The Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, The Pond Guy, and it's all about showcasing how people live the aquascape lifestyle. So we're gonna go check out a beautiful aquascape ecosystem water feature at a really cool house. Woo! Red dog. Uh-oh, another one. Oh. You got it, dog. Did you bring a steak? Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Hello. All right, go in. Ooh, ooh, How long have you had this pond? Oh, uh, a couple, two ponds here. The original pond here we did, I would say, like in 2011. Okay. Um, wow, looks some big fish in here, huh? Yeah, she grows them big. Holy cow. Was this the original yeah, or? This is the original here. Okay. Um, actually, uh, a contractor uh, left them high and dry. Yeah, um, sadly. Yeah, and then we came back and fixed it and repaired it and uh -huh. used some of the existing stones she had and uh, just fixed it up for her. So we put this one in three years later, we put that one in, so. It's addictive, isn't it, this it hobby? Is. Really what is. an incredible backyard, though. Yeah, right I'm here in the middle of uh, Old Town Downers Grove. Well, we came into a pond that wasn't working at all. And, uh -huh. um, it was only like dug down a foot deep. She loved her fish and uh, all her fish died. Mm, in the winter? In the winter. We came back and uh, re-dug it, added uh, a biological filter. Are you happy with George? Oh, I love it. I mean, this is an oasis. Amen. I'm the pond guy, Greg. Hi, Greg. What was your name? Janine. Janine. Yeah, how long was this originally? Oh, geez, that had to be about... See, 20 years ago. So for 20 years, 20 years ago, you got a preformed tub. That's how this started. It's small. Uh huh. It had the flowers. It had the fish. Next morning, wake up. Fish are gone. Flowers are all ripped up. The raccoons went in it. Yep. Preformed tubs. That happens. That won't happen in an ecosystem pond that's at least eight feet wide and two feet deep. But a preformed tub, they can walk right up and scoop them out. And my husband felt so badly that we started all this, and it just progressed. So the guy who didn't want the pond ended up really launching it. He sits in there and he'll <laughs> watch this. It's calming and he needs that. Yeah, he needs that. Who doesn't? So when did George come in and, and do this bigger pond? Oh, this is like 2014 we came back and did this one, yeah. So for 20 years you've had some sort of water and it started with a preformed tub, went to a pond over here that was built by another conjurer that didn't do a good job? Oh, I won't even go there. I mean, it, it was bad. Yes. Was very bad. And Unfortunately, we hear that a lot, right, George? Yeah, a lot, yeah, between landscapers and, and contractors that don't know what they're doing. Yep. It happens all the time. And okay. George is very reputable. I would recommend him to anybody. This isn't just, he's a friend. He's become a friend. Well, the relationships with pond customers are different than landscape all, customers, all aren't the time. they? Yeah, I mean, I got some of my uh, best customers become my best friends. You know? Amen. Really so you got you got a phase two, it's over here, huh? Yeah, so when we come home at night, what's neat is I call my submarine, so they're so big. They hear us coming, they line up, and they're right over there watching for us. Like, they hear your footsteps yeah, or whatever, yeah. the garage door opening. Yeah. Are these some of the original fish? How long have you had these? We've had them several years, many years. Well, they are big boys. You must feed them a lot. Well, yeah, I enjoy it. That's why there's a chair here. And there's a chair over there. So when I feed them, I sit there and relax and watch them. Mm -hmm. 
And then you said your husband loves sitting in the gazebo? And our yeah, what do people say that come to your house for the first time? They look at the front, they think it's nice, then they come in the back and they can't believe it. Because it's just pretty spectacular. It really is. And we all went to George and the fence. So George, give me, give me the two minute walkthrough of this entire project. Okay, so this project we did early spring and I remember uh, a lot of rain, a lot of water. So it took, uh, I think a couple extra days, but I think in, in less than four days time, and all this stuff had to be carried in. So there's no machines on this job. So you look at all these rocks. I mean, these were all put by me and my guys physically, you know? So with these little scrawny <laughs> arms, <laughs> you know, hey, that's you want to work out or you want to build ponds. That's it. You, you, you just uh, you get. It's hard work, isn't it? It is. And I'll tell you one thing. When you're thinking of doing a pond, and you say, well, I want to so big, before George says, "Well, let's do it at the go bigger," he's right because you will go bigger. You won't be satisfied. Uh, now I love what it is now, but you know, you think, okay, that was pretty nice. So add one more, and it's. Gorgeous. The average consumer gets three water features. Big, bigger, biggest. Yes. <laughs> I think we almost ran out of room here, right? <laughs> you got a moat around your gazebo. So what would the investment be like this? For what, what's involved, like explain that. This being a, a renovation project, you're always gonna probably end up spending more money. I think the average uh, consumer won't realize that and mm -hmm. get in there and start tearing things apart. But you know, a project like this with uh, the pond supply stone and labor, um, you know, you wanna check it out with some underwater lights and that, that this would be like a $20,000, $25,000 project mm -hmm. uh, from start to finish. Was it a good investment? Definitely. And at night, I can watch them from my bedroom window. The lights are on. It's beautiful. Both of them. It's just gorgeous because the colors of the fish. Well, it changes by the day, time of the day. It changes yeah. by the season. How many thousands of pounds of stone did you bring into this backyard, do you think, from both projects? Oh, wow. I mean, thousands of pounds. I mean, we're looking at about, uh, well, 10 tons. So we're looking at like 20, 25,000 pounds. For this, this project. For this here. project. There some existing here. Yep. So, I mean, then we come here, you know, again, you know, the average rock down here is anywhere from, you know, three to 500 pounds. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking at at least another uh, 10,000 pounds to, to 15,000 pounds of stone, all brought in here, you know, manually. So we're looking at really 35, 40,000 pounds of stone in this backyard. Yeah. How long have you lived here? Uh, about 50 years. How long? Another 50 year class. Wow. Well, why would you ever want to move? You have your vacation home at home. Hi, Dennis. How you doing? I'm the pond guy, Greg. Oh. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I heard this all started with you saying no pond. Yes, sir. No pond. <laughs> Are you glad you were wrong? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. This, I love this. This is about the most uh, relaxing thing that he would have. Very stressful work week, and yet come home and sit in the gazebo and watch the fish and listen to the uh, waterfall. Amen. Oh, they're just gorgeous. They take me, they put me in Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm you're in Illinois, but you feel like you're in Wisconsin That's or right. Colorado or something. Right. So you never knew it would be this addictive of a hobby when you started, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. This has become quite a, quite a thing. Start with that one silly little, what is it, a 50 gallon pond? Preformed, Preformed tub. Yeah, that's it. And look at what it has become. It yeah. is just spectacular. So for 50 years you've been in the, what's the business? Animal care business. Tender loving care animal shelter. Yep. You have any idea how many dogs and cats you've had go through there? For the whole time? Oh, no, no, we handle. It'd be over 100,000. Oh, yeah. What's that? Over 100,000 easily. That you've helped place into homes. Yeah. What a beautiful handle, thing. Yeah, at least two, 3,000 every year. Wow. They get homes, they get homes. You know, we don't just get 
all the perks we that, but we went to ones that are speed up and, and half dead, you know. And yeah. Just, you go into people's houses and when they can't take care of the animals, or how does that work? You no, said you go to Kentucky? Well, we get transfers from Kentucky. We've got one coming tomorrow, and we're taking probably about 25 animals on there. I'm just posting pictures on our uh, Facebook site right now. So if people want to find your Facebook site, what is it? Go to Tender Loving Care Animal Shelter on Facebook. Amen. And help find a dog or cat a home. Yeah. I didn't want I didn't want mosquitoes in the yard. I wanted to enjoy sitting in the yard with the, the trees and everything. But then after that first time when the coons got in there and destroyed it, and then I felt like a real bugger, you know, because he worked so hard with it. So we went out and got a little bigger pond the next day. And then after that we bought a little bigger pond. <laughs> and then we decided, you know, the heck with these preform ponds. We're gonna buy the material and we're gonna so the boys and I got in there and we dug out our first really big pond. And then we dug in because I had to learn how to do all that stuff with the liner and everything else. And then we dug another one. And then, then we started going, but well, this is all amateur junk that we're doing. We need to go professional. So then she hit on George. George started doing these things and it just, I mean, there, it's the best thing we ever did. And the best moves. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Amen, and I love hearing that. That to me is what living the aquascape lifestyle is all about. People spending time together and being able to escape all of the stress of everyday life. And the fact is that they did it themselves. They started out as this hobby and it was a high maintenance, frustrating with losing fish to predators. This is the number one reason that I started this vlog is I wanted to showcase to people how to live the aquascape lifestyle. What our goal as a manufacturer of aquascape products is to improve the consumer's experience with water features. And I thought the best way to actually do that is to showcase what a low maintenance, beautiful, ecologically friendly habitat for fish and plants would look like. And that's why I started my channel, Greg Looks Like The Pond Guy. So many times that I see water features, they're done incorrectly. There's five parts of a beautiful pond recipe. And those five parts are the fish, the plants, the rocks and gravel, mechanical filtration, which is your skimmer, and biological filtration, which is your biofalls or your wetland filters. And if you put those five parts of a beautiful pond recipe together, you can have fantastic results and lose yourself for hours on end relaxing by your aquascape water feature. That's what this vlog channel is about. It's inspiring people to live the aquascape lifestyle. If you want to live the aquascape lifestyle, check out the link below to find a certified aquascape cutter that's been trained to put these in. I love my job.